I'd like to demonstrate the Promax pipeline block. So this block can be found here in the auxiliary objects and it's this pipeline block and I've got one drawn out here with two million standard cubic feet of gas flowing through this pipeline. So let's talk about how we specify this block and what it can be used for. You'll notice right now that I have one pipeline drawn and there is a Q stream coming out of that pipeline. I'll show you in just a minute where we can enter information about the pipe surroundings in order for the pipe to calculate any heat transfer occurring as we travel through this pipe. And so that's what the Q stream represents. And if you want to ignore you know, that, that surroundings and that heat transfer, you can just remove the Q stream. But having that Q stream there will allow us to calculate that heat transfer along with the pressure drop and the other information that the pipeline already calculates. I'm going to go ahead and just open up the pipeline block and here on the process data tab we have our specifications section. You'll see that it has here a total column and then a segment column so each pipeline block can be broken into multiple segments meaning that you don't need to draw a new pipeline block every time the elevation angle changes or the pipe size changes or anything like that. You can have it all stored within one block. To add segments, I just come down here below and click this Add Segment button. And now you can see that I've added additional segments that I can specify differently each segment. The very first thing that this asks us for is what type of segment it, this is. You'll see from my list here that this can be a pipe segment, meaning a length of pipe. We can include any fittings that we have in our system any reducers or expanders and also any nozzles that we have. I'm going to choose pipe for this first segment and with pipe selected there's quite a, a list of properties here below of what's needed. If you're curious about definitions of any properties you can look in our help files or as always you can right click on these properties and choose what's this for additional information. If you're wondering what information you need to specify, a cool trick is, is I can try to execute this block. And when I do so, if I'm missing information, which obviously I am since I haven't typed anything in yet, down here below in the message log, it comes up with a list of items that still need to be specified. And so you'll see that it's telling me I need some pipe lengths, the diameter sizes, things of that nature. And so this will kind of walk you through what information is needed. I'll mention that we do have multi-phase flow correlations and so we are able to calculate pressure drop for multi-phase flow as well as you know pure vapor or pure liquids as well. And then going down let's jump into the different properties that we're actually going to specify. I have here a pipe length and so I could type in say I have two miles of pipe to begin with the number of length increments is the number of increments it's going to break this distance into as it does its calculations. And so if I wanted to break this into say 10 increments, it's going to do take 10 data points along that two mile length. I can add an elevation change or an inclination angle. And so if I know what angle I'm going up at, or more likely if I know the total elevation change over these two miles, I can type that in. You'll notice that the elevation change has a gray background, while the inclination angle has a white background, meaning we can currently only type into the inclination angle. But if I want to put in an elevation change, I just need to delete the zero in the inclination angle. That opens up my elevation change, and now I can type in the change that I'd like to see. Next we're asked for our pipe schedule and so we can choose a standard pipe or the different properties or different schedules as shown here. Okay, I'm just going to leave that as standard and then I can choose either a nominal pipe size or a diameter nominal and so if my nominal pipe size is three inches I'll type that in and it tells me what the corresponding outside diameter, thickness, and inside diameter is for that piping. Next we have an absolute roughness, which is taking into account how rough our pipe is, and we can use 
you know, part or defined roughness for particular materials as shown here. We're going to be using steel piping, and so I'll leave that alone. And you could just type in a number here as well if you knew the roughness for your system. The next thing we'll look at are these properties here, talking about our overall heat transfer coefficient. So again, since I have a Q stream attached to my pipe, it can calculate heat transfer going through this pipe. If I know the heat transfer coefficient, I can type that in. But if not, I can give Promax some information about the pipe surroundings. And from that, Promax can calculate what kind of heat transfer we'll experience in our pipe. So for example, if I know my ambient temperature, let's say this pipe, it's, it's 50 degrees around this pipe. I know my material of construction. I can come here to my material of construction, click on this arrow, and this will bring up a list of the different materials we have available. Our steels are selected by default, but you can see up here at the top right that I could choose you know, any type of piping, including, including thermoplastics. But I'll just stick with a steel piping A134 in this case. With my material selected, now I can tell it if this pipe, first off, if it's a buried pipe, or if it's above ground or submerged in water. With a buried pipe, I'm going to tell it how far in the ground it's buried. So I'll say three feet. And then I'll tell it the type of ground that I have. And so it knows the thermal diff diffusivity for that ground. OK, I'll choose clay here. So that's all the information I need for a pipe segment. OK, so that's segment number one. I'll go ahead and show you the other type of segments that are available. And so for segment two, let's look at a fitting. If you have a fitting, there is a list of fittings available here under fitting type. I can click on that arrow, and that brings up a fitting selection window. And we have different bends, an entrance and exits. I'm going to choose just a 45 degree elbow, but you can look through this fitting list. And when I choose a fitting, that will give me a resistance coefficient or an equivalent length assigned to that fitting. If you knew the fitting length or resistance coefficient, you could just type those in on your own instead of choosing a fitting uh, from our list. But that's the only thing that we need for our fittings. As mentioned, you can also do reducers or expanders, and both would use this reducer option. With that selected, I just need to define my reducer angle. So if this is an abrupt reduction or abrupt expansion, I can say it's a 180 degree angle. And then down here I can choose my new nominal pipe size. Again this could be a reduction or an expansion, so if I wanted to use it as an expansion up to a 4 inch pipe, I would just type 4 in there for my new nominal pipe size. Then after that reducer I could have another section of pipe that's now at a 4 inch diameter. Okay, so let's say we go another two miles with 10 increments. I'll say that I have a 50 foot elevation change. If you are actually decreasing an elevation, you can type in a negative elevation change here to account for that. But I'll just type in another 50 feet at my 4 inch diameter. If my material and things aren't changing, I can, you know, type in the same material. Or there at the bottom right here is a copy to end button. And if I highlight my carbon steel, my buried depth and ground type, and click copy to end, you'll see that then pushes that material and that depth all the way over through my other pipe segments. Okay, and so if you have 50 different segments, they're all the same material. You don't have to find that material for all 50 segments. You can just copy it all the way to the end. So that's all the information we need here. I'm going to go ahead and click Execute. And we'll look at some of the things that are calculated for us. So down below, we are going to see our pressure drop calculations. They'll be calculated for each individual segment, as well as a total pressure drop. We'll see how much our temperature has changed along the way. If we've got any liquid that's formed, that's going to be calculated for us as well. And so those are the main things calculated on this window. 
if we'd like some more detailed information for each increment or each data point along the way, there's an increment section here. And I'm going to come to the increment section and we'll see what is calculated there. This uh, brings out each of those increments. So again, I had 10 increments for my first two miles. It's broken that distance into you know, 10, 10 segments or 10 increments along the way. And this is telling me my length, temperature, new pressure after each increment, our cumulative pressure drop. We'll see for our flow regime, it tells us whether we are a pure gas as we were in the beginning. But once we've formed some liquid, there are different flow regimes that Promax will calculate for us. I have a liquid holdup, which is essentially just the percentage of the volume occupied by liquid. We've got linear pressure drop information, our elevation gradient, Reynolds number, friction factor. Once our liquid forms, we get a liquid flow rate and liquid velocity. And our gas velocities and flows are also here in our incremental information. So this is the type of information that it spit out, spits out for you. The last thing I want to show you in this video has to do with insulation. You'll see there's an insulation option as well. If I come to the insulation section, I can come to the bottom here and click to add a layer of insulation around my pipe. You can have multiple layers of insulation if you'd like. You just click add layers and I have two layers now. And then it gives us a drop down menu here where I can choose what type of insulation I have. Okay, so you can look through the list and see what's available to you. I'm going to say that a layer of ice is formed around my piping. When I've chosen an insulation type, it will tell me what the thermal conductivity for that type of insulation is. If I, again, if I just know the thermal conductivity, I could type that in directly instead of choosing an insulation type. And then I would just need to type in how thick the ice is around my pipe. Okay, and once again, I could have multiple layers of insulation. If you want to delete a layer of insulation, I can click Delete Layer. Now I just have that ice layer, and if I execute, the pipe would again solve now with this insulation included. Okay, and so that is how our pipeline block works. Once again, you can use one block with as many segments in it as you want, and that is going to calculate our pressure drops and temperature changes for us across our flow. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or would like to discuss anything else with us, you're always welcome to contact us. Our phone number is 979-776-5220, or you can email us at support at bre.com. Thank you.